Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can implement pull to refresh in Swift UI. Now, before I get started, I would like to tell you that this is not the best implementation of pull to refresh, all right? So I wouldn't really recommend this approach if you're using it on your projects. Definitely, I will not recommend that. Uh, unless you find a way to contain itself into its own control or use the UI pull to refresh control in the UI kit. That will be more appropriate way of doing pull to refresh. But I'll show you that how I accomplish pull to refresh. Uh, once again, um, you know, you have been, uh, you have been advised that it's not the best approach. So a couple of different things that we already have working. We have a post list view model which is simply going to display all the posts. I have a web service that simply gets some JSON information from this URL. And uh, it's like a title, it's all dummy information. And I have a content view, which as you can see currently doesn't really display anything. Let me actually show the content view again so I can resize it. There we go. All right, so the first thing I obviously need to do is I need to create an instance of the post list view model. So post list view model equals to post list view model. And this will be an observed object. So let's go ahead and create an observed object. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create a navigation view. Not sure why it is complaining. Oh, observe object, so not observable object. So I want to create a navigation view and I would want to wrap something in the navigation view and that something will be a list. Now, how do I do pull to refresh if I'm displaying a list? Well, let's first go ahead and try to display the list. So I'm gonna go ahead and say for each self.post list view model dot post and for ID we're going to use the title of the post. And now we can actually go ahead and display the post, hopefully. We can say text and post.title. All right, let's go ahead and build that. And we will also go ahead and click on try again so that it can refresh our view. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, press our Xcode preview play button so that it can initiate a web request and it can do all of that information. There we go. So all the posts are now getting displayed. You can see it's all dummy post title and nothing really uh, that interests us. So how can I go ahead and do a pull to refresh? Well, in order to do pull to refresh, you will have to use, or in this case, you will have to use a geometry reader so that you know that how far you have pulled down. But before I do that, I also want to create a navigation bar title. So let's go ahead and see that where it ends over here. So I can see, I can say over here, navigation bar title, and I can say post. And I also want to create a navigation bar item or navigation bar items, this one with a trailing and passing in a button view, which will say clear. And if I press that button, it's going to call self dot post list view model dot clear. We simply is going to clear out all the elements from the array. In other words, it's going to remove all the list. So this is going to allow us to remove everything from the list. There we go. And now we should do pull to refresh and get all the items again. But it's not really working because, well, we don't really have implementation of pull to refresh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside over here into the list and create something called a geometry reader. The geometry reader is actually allowing us, or it will allow us to get the size and the geometry reader in this case is going to return you a text also. After that, I'm going to get the frame. 
So geometry reader dot frame. Now, whenever we are using geometry reader in this case, we are going to get the frame of the thing that we are inside. So basically, in our case, we are going to get the frame for the parent, which in this case is a list. So I'm going to say coordinate space dot global. There is local space and there's global space. The global space is going to give you the geometry uh, in terms of global and local is going to just give you the geometry in terms of while the geometry is inside a list, which will never really change. Now we do need to return something. So let's go ahead and return text and just say loading. Doesn't really matter in this case. So once we have the frame, we have to check if the frame origin, so if the frame dot origin dot y is greater than 250, I told you that this is not the perfect approach, so that's why the code is kind of getting really, really weird. And then post list, which is our view model, dot fetch post. Basically, this means that if you have dragged down the uh, list to more than 250 points, then we are going to go ahead and fetch the post. Not only we are going to fetch the post, we are also going to return a text, which we are going to say loading. And else we are going to simply say return text because we do have to return text. So we're simply going to say nothing. All right. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and see that if it works correctly or not. I'm going to go ahead and start our preview. You can see that by default it loads everything obviously. I'm going to go ahead and clear everything out so we don't have anything now being displayed. And now I can go ahead and refresh and now I can get back everything. I can again clear it out. I can do like that again and then I can clear it out. So I can pull it down and whenever I pull it down and goes past 250, it makes a request to fetch all the posts and uh, then it, well, then it just gets the post and populates it. All right. I don't really consider this to be the best solution because if you want to use it in different views, different screens, you're going to end up copying this code. So maybe it will be a good idea to make it into a, a view that you can simply inject or even taking the powers of the UI kit and exposing the existing view, which already does pull to refresh into your Surf UI applications. But this is also fine for your, if you have one view and you want to simply get all that information by simply doing pull to refresh, you can see that we can see the loading sign and it, it works perfectly fine. So there you have it. You've learned how to create a pull to refresh by using Swift UI. If you want to learn more about building Swift UI applications, then check out my course on Udemy, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. This is a nine and a half hour course, which covers everything you want to know about building amazing applications using Swift UI. You can see that the course starts from building list and navigation and dive into state and binding, which are the essential topics for learning and programming in Surf UI. After that, it dives into the MVVM design pattern and implement different apps like Weather App as well as the News App for your web API and MVVM. I'm also actually creating a coffee application which will be available in a couple of days. You'll see that then we dive into property wrapper gestures, even integrating it with core data and core ML. So this is the most extensive course on Swift UI that is available on Udemy. You can already see this is the highest rated course on Udemy and it has more than 800 students with 4.7 rating, which is amazing. If you want to get access to this course, take a look at the description of the YouTube video and you will find a link to a coupon that will give you the best discount available. Please use the coupon. It will really help me a lot if you use the coupon also. And uh, if you are more interested in other courses, there will be a list of other courses also. So if you're interested in blockchain, if you're interested in MVVM, which I highly recommend, 
If you're interested in web development with Node.js, I have coupons for all of my courses listed over there. Um, so please use the coupons when you are trying to enroll in the course. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know.